Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Quick video here, I just want to highlight a couple of pre-built PC options for Prime Day that I thought were pretty decent. Now, I wouldn't say they're absolutely blow away. I feel like the pre-built market is still kind of wonky and they're still kind of attributing GPU prices to their... Uh, peak, but there are some pretty decent deals available, so let's get right into it. Let's start off with the cheapest uh, PC I saw, the HP Pavilion with an AMD Ryzen 3 5300G, 8 gigs of RAM, 512 GB SSD, and a Radeon RX 5500. So this is $600, not too bad if you're looking for a decent, you know, 1080p machine. If you're not playing too high, ga uh, too high end games at you know super high resolutions and whatnot, this could be a decent option. But even in higher-end games, you're going to be able to play them at 1080p. It's just don't expect to push 1440 or 4K, and don't be expecting, you know, maxed out 60 frames per second and all that kind of stuff. But $600, Windows installed, felt like that was a pretty decent option. All right, next up, we have a little bit of a higher-end PC. This is at $750, the CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme Gaming PC with an i3-12100F. That's a 4-core CPU at 3.3 GHz AMD RX 6500 XT, 8 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte NVMe, and then you have Windows 11 installed right out the gate as well. $750 is around the price range that, in a perfect world, I would like to spend on a, you know, pretty nice PC. I wouldn't say that this is a top-of-the-line PC or anything like that, but at $750, bucks, is going to give you pretty solid performance across the board. A 6500 XT is also a pretty decent GPU to get. Um, you know, typically this is, MSRP is $1,030. Like, that's just wild. Nobody trying to pay $1,030 for a PC like this. But at $750, okay, now we're talking a little bit more. At $800, if you're trying to go the NVIDIA route, you can get an MEK Hero with a i5 11400F 6-core 12-thread processor, 8 gigs of 3200 MHz RAM, a GTX 1650, and 500GB NVMe SSD as well. Kind of a bummer that in the lower price points, you are rocking 500 gigs on these. But I guess that's just one area where they figure, you know, you can make a bit of a sacrifice. And I kind of get it. You know, most people are probably going to be fine with 500 gigabytes. But you look at games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and how massive they are. You know, 500 gigabytes can be a little limiting. You can look at FF7 Remake as well. When you're talking about games pushing 70, 80, 100 plus gigabytes, yeah, 500 gigabytes can be limiting to some people, but, you know, you can uninstall, reinstall games. That's not too big of a deal. 1650 is a decent enough GPU, not out of this world great, and I would like to see, like, a 1660 Super around this price range, but hey, what can you do? Uh, at $900, this is pretty decent. i5 11400F, 2.6 gigahertz. RTX 3050, 8GB, 8 8GB of RAM, and once again, an 500GB uh, NVMe. So, these are kind of like the NVIDIA options, and, you know, on a lower end, uh, on the lower end side of things, and then, you know, the HP Pavilion and the CyberPower PC with the, uh, with the RX 5500 and the 6500 XT, respectively. Those are kind of the lower end AMD options right now. It's gonna be rough getting a pre-built for sub one grand and uh, have it still be fairly decent, but I thought these PCs were uh, fairly good for what you're getting. Okay, now if you're going above a grand, we can talk some pretty solid stuff. The Skytech Shiva with an Intel i5 11400F and an RTX 3060, a one terabyte NVMe, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and a 650 watt gold power supply. That's $1,100, and that's pretty solid for a PC with an RTX 3060. I mean, an RTX 3060 still goes for a hefty price point, Especially if you're talking about buying one off eBay and whatnot, and you're getting a lot of other quality parts here. If you're valuing the 3060 even at, you know, 400, 450, everything else you're getting is pretty solid. 1100 bucks for this is definitely a solid pickup. And if you're talking about gaming, well, 1080p is going to be really, really good with a 3060. 1440p, a 3060 can do fairly well in that as well. And then lastly, also wanted to give a shout to the Skytech Kronos with an Intel i5 12600K, 3.7 gigahertz, and an RTX 3070. 3070 is a beast of a GPU. Great performance at 1440p, and 1080p is a little bit, nah... I'm hesitant on saying overkill since some people just want to, you know, get 144 FPS on every game and whatnot, but, you know, 1440p is really a solid spot to be at with the 3070, but if you want to get something a little bit higher end, if you got a 144 hertz 1080p monitor, a 3070 is going to be nice for that too, one terabyte NVMe, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and once again, a 650 watt gold power supply. That comes to the market at $1,440, which yes, is kind of pricey, but a sub $1,500 pre-built. With the 3070 is actually uh, not that bad at all, given the price point of the 3070. But that's going to do it for me. Links to all of these pre bolts in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you buy anything from Amazon, clicking my link, I do get a bit of a kickback. Just want to be completely transparent. 
But as always, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching. There are some other options on the higher end, but if you're looking to spend like $1,800, two grand, you know you're getting a quality PC at that point, uh, especially if you're getting it discounted for Prime Day. Just do a little bit of research. If you're getting like a 3080 in your PC, if you're getting uh, a Ryzen 5 or whatever, you're going to be getting a pretty solid PC. So this is for those of you on a little bit of a tighter budget, but that's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.